Hello and welcome to the 13th episode of Beyond the Present Podcast. I'm here live, joined by Pujix from Canada. Hey, my man, how's it going? Everything's awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful. And of course, we have another special guest. It's his first time on the show, and his name is Trevon. Trevon, my man, how's it going? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing? It's wonderful, buddy. So for those of our listeners uh, who might not uh, know you, basically, go ahead right now and tell us about yourself, your background. My, my name is Shivank, as you guys just heard before. That's I'm, right. I'm Puya's friend, and it's my first time appearing on this episode. And uh, I basically have a background in finance. I've graduated from University of Toronto, and I'm currently taking the summer off, and I hope to travel. Very nice. Over Fantastic. The the summer. And um, my favorite team is Liverpool. Yes. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Liverpool. All right. Yes. I'm pretty sure yes. that there you go. for Pujix, that's Arsenal, right? Yes, yes that's is. fantastic. 100%. Awesome. So, guys, uh, let's start. Uh, today's topic uh, is about understanding ourselves because I really believe that uh, most of us, we don't really take the time. We spend so much darn blasting amount of time trying to learn the world around us, but fail to actually take a little bit of time to understand who we are and uh, what we really want from life. So, Pujix, first yourself, before we talk about how to know ourselves, let's first talk about why we should know ourselves. And before uh, even we go for that one, do you know yourself, Pujix? Oh, that's a very good question. I was actually sure. talking to Shivank like a minute ago or two. And then I was like, I'm pretty sure he's going to ask you that question at some point. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it always – so it I always – thought in the past that I know myself and then I came to realize I don't my, I know myself as well as I think I do okay. or I want to, to but so I think it's an ever going uh, realization of who I am and what I am but to the extent that I think it's r- relatively necessary yes I do know myself in a sense that I do know my weaknesses and strength and then I can act on those uh, appropriately and the, the, to answer the first part of the question why do we need to basically know ourselves. I think that is actually the the main reason, the major reason. There are many reasons you can come up with, of course, but then I think one of the most important ones is to know your weaknesses, you know your strengths, and basically be able to act on them. Fantastic. So, Siobhan, first of all, do you think you know yourself? So, for me, first of all, I believe knowing myself is an ongoing process. So, okay. there's times when I feel like I'm really aware, self-aware. So, my self-knowledge is at a, on a scale of 1 to 10. It's on a 10. And there's times when I feel like I just don't know myself of what I'm acting uh, really doesn't let me know better about myself. Mm-hmm. So, that's that's my answer to your question. Very well. And I, be- um, I believe to kind of, uh, you know go along that process i try to introspect as much as possible kind of know my strengths and weaknesses like puya talked about that's right and that's what's really helping me and i'm sure it's a journey so with time i'll get to really look back and reflect how well i knew myself in reality fantastic yes. i think the key word here is journey because if you want to understand yourself by literally mm-hmm. just ask a couple of questions that's probably mm-hmm. not gonna be a good answer because the fact of the matter is that we're always changing and evolving so who you yes. were a decade ago is very different than who you are right now, especially if you're somebody who is into, let's say, things such as personal development or education. So you definitely have to grow as a result of that, which means this whole knowing yourself is an ongoing process, as Shavant mentioned, and that requires yeah. constant introspection and so on and so forth. So first, let's start off. Now that you mentioned why we should uh, somehow get to know ourselves. Well, there are, of course, a lot of benefits here. Let us talk about uh, first some of the obstacles that prevent us from knowing ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people out there who do want to know themselves, but they are perhaps uh, uh, somehow in situations where it prevents them from taking the time to actually get to know themselves. So, Pujix, why is that so many uh, amount, so, so, so many people around the world do not know themselves very well, and they just don't take the time to actually get to know each, uh, themselves and to understand what their true desires are? I mean, that that could have many aspects, and I'm going to just uh, cling on to one of them because I think that's the most dangerous and uh, obstructing one of them, and that is uh, having the self-delusion of actually knowing yourself well. Wow. As you mentioned, we are always ever evolving, so we are changing. If you have one picture of yourself, almost more certainly that picture is not correct because exactly. it should be changing. And uh, and, and that, that the reason that I'm saying that's very d- dangerous is that um, – I, I believe something along this line Stephen Hawking sometimes says is like uh, uh, the, the biggest uh, the biggest um, 
I don't I don't remember the quote, but it goes along the way of uh, the biggest problem is the delusion of knowing and wow. having the knowledge, not so lack true. of knowledge itself. That's right. Yeah, so I don't remember the quote specifically, but something like that. That's right. Um, anyhow, my, my point is when you think you know, you don't feel the need to get to know. Wow. And that that is the, the biggest the danger of uh, and biggest obstacle perhaps of many people who want to know but they they think they know. They know already. So they, they have no reason to make effort an effort to basically get to know themselves. So yeah. you're saying that the people who think know themselves they know themselves are the ones who oftentimes do not take the time and the effort necessary to actually to know themselves. Exactly. And wow. the, the, the reason that I say that is that you might have a good idea of what you are. And I repeat myself, because you, as you mentioned, we are always changing. If that idea of yourself is not changing, then definitely you're in the mistake because that has to change. It's exactly. Impossible. Great point. So, Shavank, why do you think people do not take the time to yep. actually get to know themselves? Mm -hmm. So could you repeat the question, please? Why do you think uh, people around the world sometimes do not take the time necessary to introspect and to get to know themselves, to understand who they are? Right. So, okay, I would like to start off by saying people in general these days are very shallow. So they don't try to go beyond the surface and kind of understand who they are or what their goals are. And why I'm mentioning goals is because if you do not have goals, you cannot really define uh, what direction you're going in in life. Wow. So this shallowness really affects um, their willingness to go be above and beyond and know themselves and introspect. And uh, there's one more thing that really comes to the front is people tend to be more narcissistic these days. Okay. So they're really, really biased as to how, uh, who exactly they are. They would like to classify themselves as being really good or even if they're not necessarily that great. Interesting. Uh, so I would call this thing as self bias. And mm -hmm. self bias is really what blinds or clouds our judgment. That's right. And uh, lastly, I feel we're really afraid to classify ourselves as a certain kind of person. So whether I'm intellectual versus I have certain shortcomings, I'm really afraid to belong to a certain group. Interesting. And so let me just uh, something right now. You yeah. said something. You said people nowadays are shallow. First of all, yes. What do you mean by shallow exactly? And why do you think the majority nowadays are shallow? So uh, there could be a variety of reasons for being shallow. It could be just just the fact that I would say if someone in the previous generations would take to, for example, reading books a lot more, or being influenced by uh, reading philosophy books, etc. And these days there are people who just focus on uh, information provided by, say, social media. So there's a lot of people I know personally who would just scroll along Facebook and that would kind of affect their opinions about things. So that, in a way, makes them shallow. So that's what shallowness... Uh, so you're blaming the social media and the fact that people are not reading as much these days. So I'm blaming the fact that people do not go above and beyond to kind of do their due diligence or develop an understanding of topics just because it's where, much more convenient to kind of have a single uh, go-to site where they can just, you know, base their opinions off. Interesting. And do you have any other reason to cite <laughs> for claiming that the majority of people around the world are now shallow? Uh, I would say that that's the, that's the only reason that I can think of right now. Okay. But it's more of a human nature thing. A Interesting. Nature. Let me go back to Pujasir. Yeah. Pujasir, do you agree with uh, Shavank? Do you think that the majority nowadays are shallow and you're all, you also would like to blame social media for it and the fact that people are not reading as much these days? Um, I don't want to compare to a different era because it's been done many times. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. compare that to a previous mm -hmm. era of, you know, we were like this generation are more shallow or less shallow. I'm just in general, I believe, yes, there is a tendency for people, for majority of people, perhaps. And that's based on my personal experience, not that's any right. data, by the way. It's just mm -hmm. like a, my ex interaction with many people and seeing how they justify things. Um, I, I tend to see, yeah, social media can play a part. But then again, I don't want to blame a tool because it's just a tool as we mentioned mm -hmm. and um so i use social media and i don't consider myself shallow obviously otherwise i would do something about it mm -hmm. um so uh, and i do the way i do i try to uh, basically filter my um uh, what, are, what, are, what I'm exposed to on social media. I don't follow every random person, for example. That's right. I, I have a tendency to uh, take a look at, okay, what sort of, you know, person this, this guy or gal is and what sort of uh, information is he or she putting out there and whether I'm interested for a particular reason or not. And then I don't follow that person if, if not. And if I do, I, uh, I do follow them. I, I'm mostly on Instagram, but you know, on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so I'm very right. selective. 
perspective, and I do believe sometimes people are not, and they actually do look for anything coming their way because perhaps they don't have anything to do better to do. Maybe not. Maybe there is different reason for it. I don't know about that. But then when it comes to myself, the only thing that is holding me back is not social media. Is not. It's none of these things. That all of these are instruments, and the only person who is acting on these instruments is me. So I tend to think of me as the source of the problem and try to basically act better to things that happen to me. Interesting. And the other point that Siobhan mentioned was about narcissism, which is now uh, running amok all around the world. So let's go back to Siobhan here. Siobhan, how do you think narcissism can actually blind us to understand ourselves? I mean, we are talking about uh, self-understanding and trying to get to know ourselves. And you pointed out uh, narcissism. So what's the link between being narcissistic and not being able to see ourselves as who we are? Okay, so uh, since you mentioned narcissism, I believe we're always, um, I mean, the journey of uh, knowing ourselves is about kind of understanding our limitations as well as our abilities. So narcissism kind of blinds us, making us biased. So we tend to classify ourselves as being better than everyone else. And as a result, we're not really understanding uh, how others are doing relative to ours. So, yeah. Interesting. That's right. Pujix, the link between narcissism as well as poor understanding of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you're super fascinated about yourself, then mm-hmm. you're not going to see your shortcomings. And that's also part of who you are. That's and that's right. fine, by the way. There's no problem with having shortcomings. Everybody has them. Mm-hmm. But if you don't notice them and don't uh, acknowledge them, then you can't really m- uh, fix them or make yourself better or progress in that sense. Um, so so there is an innate problem in narcissism as defined. I, exactly. I understand that. It exactly, creates, yeah, it creates exactly. a blind spot. So, so true. So exactly. now let us move on to actually talk about how to get to know ourselves. Imagine right now somebody says, yes, guys, you're right. I am uh, basically addicted to social media. I do not read books and I'm a narcissist. So I got to start learning myself. What would you tell this guy or gal who would like to actually get to know him or herself? So first, you projects. What are some of your advices? What could people do to actually get to know them, know themselves? And what are the steps that they have to take to actually get there? Um, I'm going to start with saying that I was such a person at some point. Um, I think maybe perhaps most people are, at least in, in their teenage uh, years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe not all. I don't want to you know, want to generalize. But That's then right. I've seen a lot of teenagers who seem to be arrogant. Well, with good with good reason, of course. But so I was such a person. And uh, the first thing that really helped me was absolute hundred percent honesty with myself i don't care about what you say to other people i don't i'm not interested in that really i'm un- interested in what you say to yourself wow. what you see yourself as yeah i have a mental conversation uh, most people that i talk to do have a mental conversation and that's perfectly normal by the way uh so if you have a mental conversation and you tell yourself things tell yourself the honest thing and be be very honest with yourself you can be vulnerable with yourself because nobody knows it's it's not about judgment it's about progress and that's ultimately what we all want hopefully and if that's what you want you first step 100 percent, you got to be honest with yourself to be able to see the blind spots to be able to work through them interesting so shavank how could people get to know themselves okay so uh for this i believe first of all we should start ourselves by asking this question frequently on an ongoing basis that's right. uh, we keep on ignoring this so we need to Say if I, I I personally try to ask myself this question every single time I'm going through something important. Say it might be you know getting into a new job. How do how well do I know myself? So for example, when I ask myself how well do I know myself, the first step I would go through would be to first of all uh, understand my personality, what my likes or dislikes are, and also the fact whether I am an introvert versus an extrovert and how I can kind of you know relate to my surroundings accordingly. Wow. Uh, another thing that I really would focus on would be to understand my morals or my core value so say i might be a person who has very strong morals and there might be another person who does not really believe in morals That's right. so the, the set of principles you live by really define who you are and i don't say that they're the same all the time they may be different at different like stages of a person's lives now um another thing that i really really focus on when i'm trying to you 
you know, inspire people. It's like, you know, what are my goals or dreams? So whether they're short term or long term, and not just in terms of the time frame, That's but right. also whether what what are my career goals and what my, my personal goals are, because they can be independent of each other, though they obviously, you know, uh, intertwine, and how realistic they are. So very often we are trying to understand ourselves since we do not know what our strengths and weaknesses are. We, our goals can be really distant from what we're really trying to achieve. And what that really leads to is unhappiness, exactly. in my opinion. Great so, point. Yes, Very yes. great points here. And you mentioned a few mm-hmm. uh, elements that have to be considered. Uh, number one, of course, is understanding your values. Mm-hmm. The other point, of course, is about your goals and your, uh, yes. more importantly, yes. your temperaments. Because I really believe that uh, whether or not you are an introvert or an extrovert will have a huge mm-hmm. impact on your lifestyle. So let's just go a little bit deeper mm-hmm. here. Uh, one by one, address all these things. First, let's start with temperament. That is introvert or extrovert. So first of all, Pujix, do you describe yourself as more of an introverted person or extroverted? Um, I, so that's a hard question to answer. I would say I'm an uh, ex- extroverted introvert, basically. Wow, because I extroverted do introvert. So first of all, before yes. we confuse our listeners even further, let us first define <laughs> what it means to be an introvert and extrovert. So how do we distinguish these two from each other? Uh, okay, so introvert is a person that doesn't tend to uh, so- socialize as much as an introvert. Mm-hmm. It's not as outgoing. It's not as outspoken. Has a tendency to think about uh, his own thought w- within his own realm, his or her own realm of uh, you know thoughts, and right. uh, maybe express them somewhat to a selected group of friends or family, uh, but not to the broader audience. Mm-hmm. This is a tendency. It's not a rule. It's not like mm-hmm. one time one person does this or d- d- doesn't do this. That's it defines right. them. It's a tendency. It's a spectrum. So it's not a binary zero one kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so that's the introvert and extrovert is obviously the opposite. It tends to be more outgoing, more social, uh, very talkative, perhaps uh, outspoken stuff like that. Interesting. So Siobhan, tell me right now, are you yeah. an extrovert or an ex- uh, or an introvert or like uh, Pujix, you are an extroverted introvert? I am very similar to him in that case. So, I, guys, I just please stop it right now. Tell me what the hell does it mean to be an extroverted introvert? I just want to know what that means exactly. <laughs> So I, I, if I were to define it, I would say someone who is an introvert but outgoing. So I need my own personal space where I'm kind of recharging my, my ideas, my thoughts. And uh, when I actually go out, I'm still able to connect with people and not end up, you know, just being quiet in the corner and not being, being able to relate with anything. That's right. So this is something very difference. nice, recharging. And I think that's exactly yeah. <laughs> what the scientific definition is when it comes to differentiating the introverts from the extroverts. You see, it all comes down to one thing. How do you recharge your metal batteries? For introverts, this happens oftentimes alone and as a result of thinking and uh, being by yourself. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, for mm-hmm. extroverts, this happens when they are with other people. For example, if you want to know whether or not you are an extrovert or an introvert, just ask yourself this question. Which will cause you more stress? Being alone for an extended period of time or being in a social setting for a long period of time. So whichever causes you more stress determines your ultimate temperament. So for introverts, for example, they need, as uh, Siobhan mentioned, they need that space where they can actually just uh, cut off from their environments and then go inside and recharge their metal batteries. Whereas for extroverts, it's the opposite. Now, most of you guys who know me, you uh, have probably already understood I'm an extrovert. So for extroverts like us, it's going to be very difficult to be alone for a long period of time. Our brain, literally, if you want to look at the brain from a neurological point of view, our brain, that is the extroverted brains, they require a lot more stimulation to function normally. That is, in, in the absence of abundant stimulation from the environment, we experience stress initially, and eventually it leads to other forms of psychological distress. Whereas for the introverts, the opposite is the case. That is, if they receive so much, uh, basically, stimulation from the environment, they actually experience a lot of stress, which is why if you go to a party, for example, the introverts are fine, quite happy at the beginning, but at some point they got to just, you know, be alone or something. Otherwise, they just get really stressed. So with that being said now, let me ask you, because Typing from my perspective, there's no such thing as an extroverted introvert. I think you guys are in the middle, towards like the ambivert side. So, yes. which one do you think you tilted yeah, I, 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 more towards? 
I think I can actually answer that very, very neatly. I think I am on the uh, transition from being an introvert, slightly an introvert, to slightly an extrovert. That's why oh, I said okay. extrovert and introvert. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, and the reason is, I'll, I'll tell you why. I actually can uh, can deal with both of them for an extended period of time. I do genuinely enjoy being in public with people, extra, uh, interacting with them, uh, you know, sharing up opinions, ideas, having a cocktail, whatever. You know, that's the idea. Like in a party or in a social gathering, that that I it, actually coming out of that party, I feel super pumped. I feel super energetic. I feel happy. I feel um, I feel positive. That's and right. similarly, when I'm on my own, when I'm in my space, uh, what do you call it? Um, thinking about my own thoughts, organizing them, it's very useful. I feel positive. I feel energetic. But in both cases, I also can uh, feel uh, distorted. And it doesn't depend on the situation, whether it's extroverted or introverted. Mm -hmm. It depends on what I'm doing with that situation. Wow. So if I'm with myself and just looking at the wall, then probably I'm going to be depressed and, and, and distorted. It. If if not, if I'm going out and in a party and I'm sitting by myself, not talking to anybody, again, I will feel uh, extremely des destroyed. So so it's mostly depend depends on what I do with the situation. Exactly. It's uh, it is. I got it, point. man. There, there, I, I yeah. think of you right now as an ambivert uh -huh. who is slightly tilted towards extroversion now because of your new right. lifestyle. Basically, it's pretty good. And how about you, Shivang? Uh, towards which side do you find yourself more inclined most of the time? Okay, so I talked about how growing up, I felt I was an introvert and I kind of classified myself in that group. And I've kind of, I found that point that Puya made about that making that transition as something I can really reflect to. But uh, one thing that I've really noticed is the surroundings. So uh, I believe my personality type has always been dependent on the kind of people I'm around. So how much I can relate to them. If there have been people with whom I've not had, much, not even, I mean, something not much in common, it's been slightly more difficult to kind of hold a conversation with them or or feel interested enough so it really comes down to how interested i am in knowing them and whether i really need, want to take the t next step and that affects my stress levels the stress levels we talked about earlier that's so, right yeah very well fantastic yeah. so that was the first element that is knowing our temperaments because understand this if you are really an introvert then having a lifestyle where it's all about people will ultimately drain you and you cannot feel very happy on the other hand if you're an extrovert right. and you choose uh, let's say an introverted path or career in life then you will definitely suffer. So that's the first. The second one that Siobhan mentioned was, of course, about your values, understanding your core values. So right now, Pujix, first you, if somebody literally woke you up in the middle of the night and asked you, what are your top three values in life? What would you say? I mean, that's really hard. So I have one, one that is very specific, and that's just to, you know, uh, do good things um, and help people, basically. That's right. And ultimately leave this place, uh, the world, better than I stepped into it. And that's that's the ultimate value that I hold, I think, for myself. And that's why perhaps I try, I try to be an influencer, a teacher uh, personality, because I think that's, that's very, very deep in my, uh, down there in the roots of my values, basically. Fantastic. How about you, Shavank? Your top core values? Okay, so I believe my core values change with time. There were a certain time when something like being adventurous or authoritative used to be the things I would really look for in myself. But That's lately, right. it, it has been down to being very authentic. So a real person and also kind of being competent. So I've realized the importance in this challenging environment to kind of compete with everyone else. So competing in a healthy way versus unhealthy, what I'm trying to lean towards is healthy competition. And I believe this would really bring the best out of me. Fantastic. So these are the main two that I would I can think of the top of my head. Bravo, yeah. bravo. And uh, in terms of helping our listeners understand their values, so Pujix, do you have any tips? How could people understand what their core values are? Look at what you do. Like decision, your decisions are derived by your core values, and then you might not notice it consciously, but trace them back and see why you did this or, or that or the other, and then think about what. Uh, the first step would be going one layer deep, keep going. And then, for example, you say, okay, I did this. I, for example, helped the guy. Why did I help a guy? Because I felt bad for him. Why did I feel bad for him? Keep going until you find mm -hmm. a very, something that you can't ask why, how, when, uh, what, when, something like that. And yeah. then that is literally your core value. One of them, at least. It's a great way. Shavang, any other suggestions for understanding what our values are? 
Yeah, I really do. Uh, so I believe you really need to look first of all t- as to how your morals are. Do you have strong morals or weak morals? And they can really define what, let's say, if I have strong morals I would be, or if I believe in upholding morals, I would think about being a person who helps others or tries to influence others in a positive way. And if I do not really have strong morals, I might be more selfish and accordingly my v- core values would be very different. And another thing that I really believe we need to know uh, for our core values would be how willing are we to uphold whatever morals we have so that really kind of affects our determination in terms of upholding those core values that we have fantastic great suggestions Mm -hmm. and the last Mm -hmm. step of course was about goal settings and having goals because guys let's be honest you cannot really understand yourself by just thinking you got to take action you got to go out there and pursue some goals so before we actually talk about how we can find and discover our goals and stuff first you please right now what's one of the biggest goals that you have right now that keeps your mind busy most of the time um, as I mentioned, like the the ultimate, you know, uh, passion in life is to make it better, make the life better, make the world a better place to, to be living in, of course. But then that's very, very, very deep. So in a and also very day-to-day, general, because I really believe that our, you see, that, that's how I see it. I believe that goals are uh, the means to realize the end, which uh, are basically our values. This means that the goals should sure. be very specific. I call it a smart exactly. goal setting. So specific, right. measurable achievable, yep. realistic, and of course, time bound. So we know what our values are. And one of your core values, Pujix, is of course, to make the world a better place. And that's quite honest, right. given the fact that you are contributing a lot to this podcast as well. And you. Uh, you actually mastermind this whole thing. Let's be honest, this was exactly your idea. So it's a great thing and you're sure. doing it. So what yep. is, uh, from your perspective, uh, like your top goal, the way that you can actually realize that value? Mm. Yeah, so that's that's a very good question. I, the, the second part is the day-to-day goals or the month-to-month goals are. Um, I, I'm going to name the two uh, that are most important to me. And then, first of all, uh, educate myself as much as possible. Learn as as uh, massively as possible. And I'm, when I'm talking about as much as possible, you could you could learn a lot in a billion years, but then in a short period of time, of course. So that's right. speed it up, make it uh, learn as much as possible in a short period of time. And the second one that that is to be, be able to help people better, of course. And that the second uh, the second part of uh, the second goal goal that I have, which is actually more tangible, is to actually write a book eventually wow. in the coming few years. Yep. Looking forward to um, my man. Looking forward to it. And let's move no on to Shivank. So, what are your top goals right? Right now, Shivank. Right. So as I uh, talked earlier, I kind of define goals as short term and long term and also as career goals versus personal goals. So I talked a little bit about how my career goals kind of relate to my field since I'm in finance. I hope to work at banks uh, where I can kind of make a difference. And I know it can be a very difficult task considering how many number of employees a certain organization has these days so uh, to kind of uh, fulfill my goal I I want to go where I can step out of my comfort zone wherever possible and it might sound a little unconventional but just uh, having the willingness to kind of uh, set this as my goal helps me challenge myself at each uh, junction I am when I'm making life decisions and so yeah this is one of my main goals I would say interesting by the way Siobhan uh, you are the first person in my life who said I want to work at a bank to make a difference because unfortunately uh, it's a stereotype where we assume bankers to be well how shall we say it uh, to be a slightly uh, not uh, let's just say uh, somehow the kind of people who we expect or typically assume to contribute to societies so how do you plan to actually make the world a better place by being a banker so I hope to use my skills, whatever skills I have learned through a quality education, through whatever work experiences I've had in the past, and to use them to balance kind of the need to kind of maximize the interests of wherever I'm working. And, and, and to foreclose kind of, the homes of a lot of people who cannot pay their mortgages, right? Uh, oh, so it depends <laughs> on what function I perform, but I do agree that is the case in many organizations. But I foreclose I your believe- home for the <laughs> sake of making this world a better place. I'll find another tenant. Get the hell out of that home. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they can be balanced. It's, it's so it's true, man. Because let's be honest, their, guys. Yeah, money yeah. matters. We, we need to be able to uh, somehow enhance the overall financials around the world because now we're seeing a lot of dependence. True, true, true. And this is causing a lot of distress for a lot of people. It's so true. And I true. Uh, totally agree in this regard. So uh, now, Puchix, what do you think we can do to discover our goals? What are your tips for our listeners to set their goals that allow them to understand themselves and, of course, to realize their values? 
Right. I mean, we we talked about how you f find your values, your your ultimate uh, goals. I you could name them, but then f having found that, your point is okay. What do I want to? Uh, how do I want to see? Two things. First of all, how do I? How can I achieve those uh, values? And setting smaller goals to achieve those values, step 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 by step. And then the second thing is, okay, how do I want to see myself in 20 years, in 30 years, or 10 years time? And picture yourself literally. What uh, what quality of life you have? What what are you dressing? Where are you living? What are you doing? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then having that picture, how can I get there? And setting smaller, long, short term goals. Fantastic, Shavon. Any goal setting <laughs> tips for our listeners? Yes, I do. So I'm kind of building on what Puya said. It's like, how realistic are your goals? So for that, I would really like to know what I really want to avoid in life. So know what you don't want. I know people kind of overlook this very often, but if you, if you try to look deeper beneath the surface as to what you really don't want to, what direction you do not want to go along, you can kind of avoid mistakes in the future. And another thing that I would like to add in terms of goal setting is to kind of focus on not just your mental well-being, but also your physical well-being. So kind of know your body, what your abilities are, what your limitations are, and kind of you relating with the external environment. That would really help with whatever goals I have. Uh, so whatever Puya said, on top of that, yes. Fantastic. A tremendous yep. podcast, literally packed mm -hmm. with information. I love it. It's wonderful. But we're approaching the end of the show. Fast -paced today. Exactly. It's, it's pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> so uh, now let's move on to you, Pujix. After all that we talk regarding understanding ourselves, values, as well as goal setting, what is now your final comment for our listeners? Look, ultimately, everybody has to know or wants to know themselves. I mean, it's not even a question of has to because, I mean, let's face it, the first question that we always ask is, who am I? Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Et cetera, et cetera. And that begins with knowing yourself. So, um, it, it, First of all, open. I tend to open my mind up, so I'll advise that to to others too. To open your mind up to not knowing yourself, even when you feel like you do, there might be a corner of it that you're missing. Look for that corner always, even if you believe that you're ultimately knowing yourself very well. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the narcissism part is very radical part of it. But even if you don't consider yourself a narcissist, uh, that can also happen that you miss a spot. So always look for those missing spots and then try to fill in uh, the pieces of the puzzle. Wonderful. And Shavank, what is your final comment for our listeners? Okay, my final thought is that each little experience or interaction in our life kind of teaches us more and more about ourselves on this journey of self-discovery. We just need to know where to look. And by doing this, we kind of go on to preserve our uniqueness. And this uniqueness can help us go really far in life and let go of our, the negative elements in our life. So that's the final thought I would have with regards to this topic. That's wonderful, guys. I yeah. want to thank both of you, Pujix and Shavank, for joining mm -hmm. this show. It was a wonderful discussion filled with mm -hmm. great advice for our listeners. So thanks to both of you, especially to you, Shavank, for thank being you. here for the first time. We're really glad My to pleasure. have you here with us. My it. pleasure. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. And this is all the time we have for it. This was uh, Beyond the Present Podcast. And my name is Daniel. Before we go, don't forget to leave a review on iTunes or Google Play because we would really love to hear from you guys and of course we'll reach a, a wider audience. Thank you very much for listening and wish you guys a wonderful one. Take care.